Hi, this is David McCam for WebTNG. In this video, I'm looking at a new builder. It's not here yet, it's on the horizon. This isn't even a first look, it's more of a what the heck is this. But after poking around with it a little while, I thought it was probably worth sharing. Something that I'd like to keep an eye on to see how it develops. This new builder is called Craft. Here's the website here. As you see, there aren't really many options. There's no documentation and very little information. These aren't buttons leading to more information or anything. They already have a pricing of $120 per year. And we can see that there's a beta you can try out now. So I have a test site here that I set up to try this out and I downloaded the craft beta and activated it. And when you do that, you get a new menu item here. You go in here and the only option is to create a new theme. There's no going back. <laughs> Something they need to add here is to go back to the WordPress admin. But anyway, the option is you can create a new theme and I'll call this WebTNG theme. Okay, and then you go into their builder. So this goes back. You can select it, but there's no option to delete it or anything. But anyway, let's select it. And then here are your browser size views for doing your responsive design. A save button. This is where you can add elements. So they have some layout elements, some topography elements, dynamic elements, an image, and a code embed. Not very many elements here. This is obviously brand new. If we click on the stack icon, then you have the option to create templates. Okay, and they give you a number of options or you can create a custom one. And then there's a place here where you can create components. And then down here, this is like your navigator here. Okay, the only element on the page is the body. And this is for your asset library. When you're over here, you have a design tab or a settings tab. And on the design, you can add a class. You have layout options. You have spacing options for margin and padding. Sizing options. Positioning. Topography. So these, where you have a plus sign, it's basically you're adding an attribute. So that's what that's for. There's border options. Border radius transition, box shadow, and visibility options. And if you go to the settings, then each element, depending on what it is, might have different settings. And we'll see some of these as we go along. Okay, so I'm going to go here and select the body. And then I'm going to add a section. And I'm going to add a container inside the section. And then I'll add the div block. And inside the block, I will add a text link. And let's go for uh, design topography. Let's make it white. And then it's underlined, so let's remove the underline. And for size, let's make it 2.5. Rim, all right. Then under settings for the URL, if you go here, the, this lists out the pages and posts and custom posts on your site, but here's a database icon. So we have user, dynamic data we can pick, or general. So for URL, we'll pick site URL, making the header here. And then for the text, we'll remove the placeholder and we'll add the site title. Okay, so here's our site title. 
Let's see, design, topography. Do we see a, a hover state? Would it be under transition? Okay, I don't see right off how to change the hover state. There probably is an option for that. All right, but let's go back to the stack. And in the container now, I want to add another block. And then let's add the menu. If we look, there is no menu. There's a link block. I think that's maybe like a link wrapper. So I'm going to do another text link. We'll make this white again. Okay, and we'll remove the underline. We'll set the size for 1.5 rim. Okay, and then under settings, we'll set the text to be sample page. And for URL, we'll type sample page. Okay, so this is kind of our menu placeholder, I guess. If we go to our container and settings layout flex flex direction packed space between okay justify middle so we have this here and let's go to the section and right click on that and make component and then here, let's rename this to header, and let's save. All right, we've created our header, <laughs> or a first iteration of a header. Okay, so you get the idea here, like I'm guessing that they would have a menu component, but I guess you could create one yourself if you wanted to. Let's keep going. Let's go back to our stack. In body, let's add another section. And inside the section, let's add a container. And let's give that container some margin top. Let's say three rim on top and margin bottom. Say another three rim. And then inside our container, they have these query and loop dynamic elements. From playing around with it, I've figured out that you put the query in first. And so let's go to the settings and we want this to be posts. You can select the post type. See, we're getting a lot of built-in WordPress post types here that should probably be filtered out. But you also see, I mean, like here's our custom post types here. But you also see kind of interesting, here's a field group or an ACF field, and maybe we could use these for a repeater or something like that, so that looks kind of interesting. But anyway, we're doing our home page. I think we could probably do inherit for the home page. And then inside the query, we add our loop, and the source is empty, but we want it to be the query posts. You also could do some user information here, but we'll do query posts. Then I guess we would add a div block and we would add an image. And for the image, we would go to here. We saw before our user and our general options, but now we have the options also from our query. So we have a lot of dynamic data options we could pick here. Let's just take uh, this one. But before we go, here's, you know, quite a few different ones we could pick. Then let's go and add under that a heading. We'll make this an H3. And for the text, we'll remove that placeholder. And we'll go down here, post title. So it's picking this up. Let's save at this point and just go look on the front end and see what we've got. Let's refresh. So here's our featured image and here's the post title. We have this kind of error here. 
I don't think that's for me. I think this must be a typo or something in the code that's causing that. When you look at the image here, you see you have two options, lazy load or eager load. And if I change it to eager load and refresh, see, so I think that's like a issue with the builder. This is a beta, so go to our block and let's put some margin at the bottom. Let's say one and a half rims. Does that give us some space between? Yeah, so that's a little space between there. I think I can make it bigger. All right, so we have our image, our heading. Let's add now a text block. Okay, and go to the settings for that. Let's see if we can choose the excerpt here. Here's post excerpt. So here's our post excerpt. And then let's go back to our stack, pick the div, and now let's add, there's no button component, so let's do another text link. So then we'll say read more. Let's do database icon, post slug, there we go. All right, so there's kind of a, not even a first look, but just um, playing around with the builder. Now you're sitting there going, yet another page builder. But Craft has a wrinkle, something a little bit different. So before we check out and do some discussion and some conclusions, there's one other thing to show you. So let's go and look here. Here is the site our local site. Let's go look in the finder at that. And we see here is the folder. And if we go to WP content, here are the themes. And oh my goodness, web TNG theme. That's what we called our theme. If we open that, there's an assets folder, template parts. Here's our header, PHP file. Here's our front page. That was the file we were editing. Let's take a look at that. All right. Craft has written that to disk for us. Here's get template part header. Here's our post loop. All right, so that's the other thing that I wanted to show you here. So we've done, it's not even a first look. It's kind of a poke around at this early beta of the Craft Builder. Like I said, it's obviously a very early version of a beta. It's going to need some more components or widgets or elements or modules, whatever you want to call them. The commonly used features that we're used to in a builder, such as a menu or navigation element. They also had a very good array of dynamic data options and the query and loop builder components seem fairly easy to use and pretty interesting also. Looks like you'll be able to build your own standalone themes. We're used to page builders that create templates, you know, have a theme builder component, and those templates are saved in the database. This is actually a PHP theme builder. Reminds me a little bit of PineGrow. PineGrow, of course, has many more features and is much more mature. Craft is just focused solely on the theme building feature. But I think as a first get it out there, get some feedback, look, Craft Builder looks pretty interesting and I think it's worth keeping an eye on. So that's my What is Craft Builder video. If you found the video interesting, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. It really helps a lot. There's a text summary with some links on the WebTNG website along with other walkthroughs, reviews, and videos. Thank you for watching.